Ma'am, we are live. You will start. Very, very good afternoon to everybody. Let us welcome our chief guest, Mrs. V. Vidyavati, who is the secretary to the Ministry of Tourism and 1991 batch IS officer of the Karnataka cadre, who's, who was the director general of the Archaeological Survey of India. And she has been promoting India as a tourist destination for domestic and global markets by working with different stakeholders, as well as driving the development of the country's tourism industry. Uh, she has been working with the G20 events very vigorously. Ma'am, it is our pleasure to have you with us. Let me also introduce you to the guest of honor, Mr. David Pasquini, Commercial Officer in Mumbai of the US Commercial Service since April 2022, Master in Strategy Building for UK's investment and trade promotion for the USA in aerospace, space, and defense services. Prior based in San Diego, California as the UK consul with DIT, he's fluent in Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. Uh, we, of course, have with us Mr. Manav Tadani, founder and chairman, Hotel Avita, serial entrepreneur, trusted advisor, restauranter, filmist, and passionate hotelier. Uh, he brought HBS to India and runs various conferences. Uh, we have Mrs. Radha Bhatia with us, chairperson Bird Group with 52 years of exemplary career, along with her husband and sons have played a phenomenal role to expand across various verticals, force behind the Bird Academy, founder member of the World Travel and Tourism Council India, and the first Indian woman to be honorary consul of Sullivan. We have Mr. Vipin Vora, who's chairperson for Continental Carriers Group and chairman TNX Group. He's known for his innumerable trend-setting advancements in his 45 years of career in the freight and the cargo industry. Mr. Rajan Bahadur, CEO Tourism and Hospitality Skill Council, Ministry of Skill Development. He has 35 years of experience, strong leadership, bridging the gap in skill ecosystems, Previously, MD and CEO Care India, COO Unison Hotels, MD Leoblia Hotels, Regional Director of Starwood. With this, I have introduced our esteemed panel, ma'am, and may I request you to please uh, give your address to the panel. Um, thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor to, to be here. And uh, clearly from the introduction, I see that probably I'm the least experienced in the tourism sector compared to all you on the screen there. Uh, but having said that, um, I'm here to hear all of you, to listen to you, uh, understand and take back what we can do to develop uh, tourism uh, between and, and the entire sector uh, with the closest co collaboration between uh, India and the United States. Um, at, at the outset, I really want to uh, give a big thanks to the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce for uh, uh, for uh, asking me to be a part of this discussion. Uh, you know, the, the fact that India, India and the USA's bilateral relations have reached a very, very <clears throat> critical point and a very exciting point and understatement. I mean, we've been seeing the kind of traction which uh, has come up after the our Honorable Miller visited the US quite recently and the kind of uh, support and the kind of related enthusiasm which has been found across sectors. And tourism certainly is going to benefit from this uh, partnership and from this uh, rejuvenated environment all around us. Uh, interestingly, during 2019, as I understand, uh, USA ranked first in tourism receipts, you know, and we were, you know, and third in tourist arrivals. For India, we are the uh, USA is the biggest tourist market. We get around one and a half million tourists. We used to get one and a half million tourists before COVID-19 struck. But I think post fit, you know, the numbers have picked up and we are expected to reach the pre-pandemic level by 2023. It's a very conservative estimate. We would want to go much beyond that. Uh, from, from my uh, little experience in tourism, what I understand that we do not have a formal uh, MO, you know, memorandum of understanding with the U.S., but we do have 
a cooperation in various areas, you know, under the commercial track of the strategic and cover dialogue uh, since 2016. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, it, is, uh, it needs no reiteration that, you know, tourism is a very, very important vehicle to, to promote people-to-people -people contacts and to promote understanding between uh, the countries. Um, I, I really am happy to place before you the, the discussion we had in the recent concluded G20 Institute of Tourism in Goa. The, in which USA also was is one of the G20 partners. Uh, the Go Roadmap, which is now a public document, uh, the G20 Roadmap for Tourism Track, it talks about five major pillars. And I think the, all the five major pillars are those on which both India and USA can work together, starting from uh, green tourism, supporting tourism MSMEs, killing, digitalization, and finally, destination management. And I think we could probably use this framework to further our cooperation between the two, uh, two, two countries. Um, our Honorable Prime Minister had also launched the Mission for Life, and we are very, very happy to say that this has also been adopted as one of the main key points of the Goa Roadmap, which has come out after the Goa 20 Goa um, you know, Tourism Ministerial Meeting. We attach a great importance to implementing the UN 20 SDGs. And again, the, the, uh, the idea is that every, every uh, vertical we work with the US, you know, we really want to ensure that these pillars are taken care of so that whatever we do is not only enriching both the countries, but also actually shows the world that this is the way we could do things. Um, I a lot of things to say, but I said I'm not going to talk much because sometimes bureaucrats like to listen to their own voices, but here I want to listen to all of you because all of you come with a lot of experience. But I certainly want to say that there are three or four major areas in which we would like to work with the United States and you know, with the entire ecosystem. One is on, you know, one being how do we consider exchanging lessons in destination management? I mean, how do we actually approach the entire concept of destination management? Is there something I learned from the US? Is there something we can share our experiences with the US and can we work together in this area? Uh, the second is uh, in terms of academic collaboration. We have uh, 40 institutes of hotel management and 14 food craft institutes in India. So is there something we do in this area to work with the hotel and the, the entire hotel industry, both government in India, as well as the industry in the US, can we work together in this sector? Uh, third, of course, is the tourism ecosystem itself. In, in what I mean is the tour operators, travel agents, how do we bring them into, into, into a composite kind of an, uh, you know, a very healthy and sustainable uh, tourism development system? I mean, so that the, the operators and, and all of us, we don't work at cross purposes. All of us are moving to one goal of promoting accessible tourism across both geographies. Um, least but not the least, uh, you know, we, I think there's a, there's a lot of work which has happened, especially in the United States in terms of uh, data. You know, how do we actually gather data? What kind of research goes into it? What kind of market analytics goes into this? How do you mine the data? How do you actually use the data? I mean, these are some things I would really uh, like to work with the our industry, but also like to work with the industry uh, in the United States. Uh, I just want to wind up on one saying that uh, in September, uh, hopefully the, the dates are still not clear, uh, but we should be having a firm date shortly. Uh, we plan to, Gov India plans to organize a Global Tourist Investors Summit. And this is the forum where we expect a lot of discussions to happen, a lot of uh, very productive discussions leading to tangible outcomes we expect in this uh, summit. And I really look forward the, to, to the cooperation, collaboration, and uh, participate to all of you on the screen here. Uh, with those few words, I rest my case and look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for elaborating and uh, guiding us on through the five pillars which have been 
It's time for through G20. And of course, the key points have been well taken. And we rest to show you that in the month of September for the summit, at least this panel would be working uh, shoulder to shoulder and um, uh, hand in hand for the uh, particular event. And uh, with this, uh, can I request uh, Madam Radha Bhatia to please tell us and give us a scenario, a bird's eye view of the tourism scenario, ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, ma'am. Um, you want me to be the first uh, to give my ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary. This is Vidyavati ji for giving that starting point, which uh, we are going to work together with. India is a growing market. I would give compliments to our prime minister <clears throat> with the vision. I think it is the time for India to show the world as he always says, Vasundeva Kutumba Bhava, one earth, one family. Let's work together because what is for our benefit indirectly will also be the benefit for US. We have to join hands to work together. And I'm glad that uh, India American Chamber of Commerce has picked up a topic which is the maximum getting employments and also the economy. US companies are much more advanced because India was lagging behind with the R&D and the development. Though it was all Indians who worked in US to raise their economy and raise the flag of India in US. With the interest of the two countries and with a population of 1.4 billion people, I think there are more than two to 3% Indians who are in US. They are also looking towards India because the motherland is always preferred for them also. What we are lacking today is a joint effort. Tourism cannot stand alone without hospitality and aviation. I always joke that it is the hat which has to be worn. Hospitality, aviation, travel and tourism. And I'm going to work together with this group for putting the hat on. Surprisingly, the direct flights, the traffic rights between India and US is just 26% of the 100% which people are going. They are going either via Middle East or Europe, via Dubai. So we have to increase the traffic rights. Indians are known to be born hospitable people. Atithi Deva Bhava, any visitor, any guest who comes is like a God and they really serve them like a God. It is inborn with Indians, but what we lack is a trained manpower. Every sector needs a specific type of training, whether it is a cook, whether it is even as a service boy, even a bell boy, we have to train him. 
the smallest to the highest, which is missing today. Harvard School of Business is famous and they are looking towards India now. All the universities in Europe are looking towards India now because India has 65% of population, which is less than 45 years. And we could be the manpower supplier to the global world. I have been talking to many foreign delegates and foreign missions. Everybody is feeling the glitch that the trained manpower is not there. First of all, the manpower is not there. Even if the manpower is there, the trainings are not there. So most important soft skill training, how to deal with people and also the emotional trainings. So let's work together. Let's put the hat onto us. I would request IACC to bring onto this platform the aviation, travel, tourism, and of course, the cultural ministry also. Because India has to give to the whole world being the oldest civilization and we have Ayurveda, we have all the herbs. Our halvi, which is turmeric, is marketed more in Europe and US. And I think now they have branded as the turmeric tea and turmeric latte, which is even more expensive than the ordinary coffee. Why? Because they know the benefits of it. Let us be the show path to the whole world. There's so many cancers, new diseases coming. And these diseases can all be treated with the Indian herbs. Tulsi, which again is translated into basil. There are seven different types of basils, which people don't know, even the Indians don't know. And each basil has a property which is good for health. So a healthy society, let's work together. Also, I would request to have the Ministry of Ayush included. Let's make a full package for the benefit of mankind. I think if there are any questions, I'm there to answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving us such elaboration and uh, telling us about the integration, which is a very, very vital portion of all the ministries coming together as one strength. As I said, one step is 100 steps. So uh, with this, uh, can I ask Mr. Manav Tadani that how the hotels have changed in performance, uh, you know, and what is the status of the domestic tourism today? Can you throw some light on that? Thank you, Jyoti. And uh... Uh, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet everyone. Um, you know, I think the best is still to come. Uh, we've had an amazing uh, 12 months already. Uh, I think almost all markets have uh, done better than the pre-pandemic stages. But I strongly believe the best is yet to come. Um, domestic, and it's all being led by the domestic tourism. And that's very important to understand that while uh, even the secretary uh, mentioned that the numbers of arrivals has gone down, uh, but that hasn't stopped hotels uh, doing extremely well because it's the domestic tourism that is fueling everything. So 
um, you know, particularly the domestic leisure locations are doing extremely well. And, and these leisure locations that used to do maybe 40, 45% occupancy today are doing 60, 65% occupancy. I was just in Kashmir last week and uh, they've never seen such numbers. And it's great to see a tourism uh, state like Kashmir uh, get that kind of a response from the domestic market. Uh, but, you know, th this is an Indo-US uh, services summit, and I want to kind of uh, put some focus on that. What is happening is while we may not be getting that many uh, international tourists coming into India, a lot of Indians are traveling abroad, and the US is a very natural location for Indians because a lot of the families have their children, they have other family members in the US, and there's a lot of US-India travel that takes place. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity for growth, which will happen. Uh, clearly, Air India will play a big role as they get their new planes. I'm sure they will start servicing more and more long distance flights to direct cities in the US. But uh, I think what is happening is that the Indian domestic traveler or the Indian traveler is becoming one of the most sought after travelers around the world. Um, when I was growing up in the 80s, this used to be the Japanese travelers that people would look for. Um, the last two decades, perhaps it was the Chinese traveler, uh, which were really sought after. And, you know, because that was regulated, it was really determined by the Chinese government as to where their travelers would travel and then those countries would uh, travel. In the case of Indians, uh, there is no dictate that you have to travel to this country or that country. But the U.S. is a national partner uh, for India. And therefore, we see a lot of uh, opportunity for travel from Indians going abroad, but also family members coming to India, apart from just tourists. The other big factor is the, the international businessmen and the companies, uh, particularly even now with uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, very successful trip to the U.S., so many new partnerships are being formed, which is going to lead to a lot more back and forth between business travelers. And that can only help hospitality and hotels, uh, both in business locations and possibly even in leisure locations. So the best is still to come. Performances are up. And I think this trend is going to carry on for some time. That's great, Panav, for giving us uh, such a good idea and throwing light on the U.S. and their relations as far as business travels and how we can collaborate and leverage out of it. And uh, of course, uh, uh, needless to say, uh, Mr. Paskini, that logistics, of course, also is a very, very essential component of tourism. And uh, I, here I would re uh, request Mr. Vipin Vora, Chairman of the Continental Carriers, to please throw light upon. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, ma'am, uh, Vidyavati, David uh, Paskini, Ma'am Radha Bhatia, you know, who's a very well-known person in the aviation industry, Manav Ji and Rajan Ji, and distinguished guests. You know, cargo or logistics is a very important subject, you know, along with the travel, tourism, and the hospitality. You know, I want to take you before COVID, you know, cargo was always treated as a stepchild treatment, you know. There were always every ministry, everybody was talking about passengers, 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 you know, travel, tourism, but nobody was talking about cargo before COVID. Now, when the COVID started, basically on 20th of, uh, you know, March, you know, everything came to a standstill. You know, no flights were operating, no airports were operating, and we required, the country required a lot of medicine, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, equipments, you know, for uh, COVID patients. Now, there were no flights. All the passenger flights were, you know, stopped. Nobody was flying those things. Airports were closed. And we were told by the Ministry, Civil Aviation, that we have to start working. They want the airport to start because they needed, you know, all those uh, equipments, you know, go, you know, COVID, that, uh, you know, vessels and all those things. And we were one of the first ones to start operation at Delhi Airport. Now, at that time, there were no passenger flights, you know, for a few days. It was only, you know, passenger flights were converted into cargo flights. And all the, most of the airlines, they survived because of this cargo thing. Otherwise, in COVID, a lot of airlines would have gone busted, you know. It was uh, the cargo which saved 
most of the airlines, you know, they were running, you know, passenger aircraft were running on the cargo, on the seats, you know, even in India, you know, we had a lot of, uh, you know, perishables moving on passenger flights, you know, taking cargo on the seats, other places. And then, you know, when this uh, thing started, you know, point to point flights, a lot of cargo started moving, you know, outside India and then into India because we required a lot of raw material for, for medical goods and all. And cargo played a very, very important role during that period, logistics. Today, the way the Make in India thing is getting popular, the Prime Minister, the way he's, uh, you know, making Indian as an industrial hub, you know, they're bound to be increase in cargo. And when the passenger flights are going to increase, when the passengers will come more, there'll be more cargo space and more cargo will go, which will make the industry, you know, more profitable because cargo revenue comes, you know, almost 40% car revenue comes from the cargo cargo on the passenger flights. So passenger, you know, as well as cargo plays a very important role in the, in the, in the industry. So, you know, the way the future is, a lot of airlines we expect to come and, you know, come to India, direct flights, not indirect flights, the way the passengers are increasing with the way the local, you know, tourism or passengers are increasing from one point to another, even the cargo is increasing. Today, you know, previously a lot of, uh, you know, they were, they were perishable, you know, which were, which were, which were being, uh, you know, were there in the, you know, uh, Hati and other place, Northeast. They were, you know, getting waste. But now, even because of the domestic flight charters, that those even, uh, you know, Northeast is getting very popular for the, for the cargo, for the perishable, and they're going abroad. Similarly, from Kashmir, you know, the, the lot of things, cherries and all are being, uh, you know, sent to all over India. Previously, they were not going, you know, because trucks were taking too much time and the cargo was going, you know, haywire. So, a lot of cargo plays a very important role in the development of the country along with the passenger and tourism, you know. So that's integral part of the, you know, uh, tourism and travel industry. Civil aviation, of course, in the last three years has taken a lot of interest in the, in the cargo. You know, the national logistic policy has also been announced. Warehousing policy, a lot of things are coming up. And we are quite positive that the way the passengers are going to increase, our industry is going to grow you know, and cargo will also grow along with the passenger and, uh, you know, tourism industry. So that's what I can say. Cargo is also very, very important along with the travel and tourism industry, plus even the medical, you know, tourists which are coming, you know, if they require anything, you know, passenger flights, you know, the ambulances and all, if they want cargo and everything, you know, we we be there to help the industry, you know, in bringing more cargo space into India. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us all this perspective. And I really appreciate, yes, it is true that during COVID times, most of the passenger flights had turned for cargo and all this did happen uh, uh, through a few examples known to me as well. Uh, all said and done as one of the very important points we had, which uh, Madam Radha had also made was about manpower. So can I uh, request Mr. Rajan to please throw some light as to what post COVID do you see tourism as? Your mute, please. Unmute yourself, please. Yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jyoti, and thank you, IACC. I'm very excited to be part of this panel. We heard Madam Secretary, my fellow speakers talk about it. Uh, before getting into the post, COVID thing, very briefly about, you know, pre-COVID, particularly our sector, the tourism and hospitality sector, was booming. Uh, globally, one out of 11 jobs, uh, uh, you know, from the sector. Um, I think in India, we contributed hugely towards the GDP. We were the third largest foreign exchange earner. Everything was going on. Though. And then the COVID struck us, and nobody in the wildest of dreams ever imagined that the, nearly the entire world would come to a standstill for close to 18 months, if not 24 months. So that was very unprecedented. However, having said that, with any disruption and the optimistic person that I am, I think there are a lot of opportunities. So, you know, we always heard about the, uh, look at the goalpost and shoot for the goal, but what do you do during COVID when the goalposts were changing every hour? 
so the new mantra became, um, you know, there was a thing of survival of the fittest, which actually went out of the window. It became survival of the quickest. So whoever adapted quickly to the situation survived. I think fast forwarding it to post COVID, I do agree with Manav who says that the best is yet to come. Absolutely. I mean, you're seeing green shoot, you're seeing things happening. Uh, the industry coming back on track very quickly uh, and the best is yet to come. The concern is with the best yet to come, how do we feed that with manpower? I mean, I'm sitting here in Colombo talking in the Thai convention, you're talking about uh, you know, between Air India and Indigo, nearly under 1,000 flights, uh, aircraft have been ordered, which is all very great. New new hotel chains are coming up and so on and so forth. And that's great because that's not about an individual organization. That's the India story. But at the same time, we need manpower to service all of this. At THSC, uh, that's Tourism and Hospitality Skill Council, we work with close to about 2,500 industry partners. And we actually work with them on various qualifications. Post-COVID, as you all are aware, that a lot of qualifications have changed. The way we do business, a uh, lot of uh, jobs have become redundant, new jobs have come up. So for example, out of the 80 qualifications that we have currently, you added out of that 20 and new qualifications, which is all focused towards adventure tourism. Domestic being very important. So I, I can talk a lot about this over and over, but as the secretary madam also says, there are, we work with, because this is to do with the US, we work with a lot of US companies, be it Radisson or Marriott or KFC or Hilton Hotels and so on and so forth, including facility management company like GLS where we collaborate and train and skill manpower. I mean, there are lots of opportunities between India and the US, whether it's an exchange program, whether it's apprenticeship, whether it's master trainers, whether it is collaboration on startups, which we can do. But to my mind, I think this is a great space to be in. This is a place where manpower will play a critical role. As well, Bharti also mentioned that, you know, over uh, over 65% uh, of our population is below the age of 40, 45. And uh, that's a sweet spot to be in. But how do we skill them? How do we make them ready for employment? And how do we make sure that we don't only just skill them, but also ensure that they get placed in respectable jobs, whether in India or overseas in the US. And these, tourism is one which can be become very aspirational. You know, it's not about housekeeping or a shoe, shoe chef or, uh, or, you know, front office. It's about how do you grow? Extremely proud to say that as an Indian, today you find globally, a lot of Indians, particularly in the hospitality sector, who are doing exceedingly well. So there is a scope, there is a scope to bringing in that knowledge along with, uh, uh, with our partners in the U.S. Just to give you a very small example, at Tourism and Hospitality Skill Council, we have just signed a knowledge sharing agreement with the American Hotel and Lodging Educational Institute, which as a lot of you may be knowing, is a recognized globally, a prominent leader in the certification and academic publication. Now, can you imagine that students here who are studying, who are being skilled across 600 of our training centers at THSC throughout India, some of them get certified by AHLEI. And that is the value that we can add along with the US. I'm not even talking about you know, academics and the exchange program, but I'll hold here because it's extremely passionate and we can go on and on, but I'll hold here for a moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was really, really descriptive. Yes, certifications and qualifications are a very, very imperative portion and a part of uh, tourism. Coming to the all the statistics, what we've been speaking about, U.S. has ranked number one in the receipts as U.S. dollar 214.1 billion by 2019. And we are expecting by 2028 that India's GDP is expected to grow to U.S. dollar 512 billion. But in comparison to U.S., of course, 
we have yet a lot of steps to be taken. So on this, uh, I would request uh, Mr. David Pasquini to please comment that as Secretary Ma'am had mentioned, the data collection is one of the very, very important factors which we need to really work upon and take guidance from US. Please, can you kindly throw light on this? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having me here today. Um, Madam Radha has uh, sparked my curiosity. I didn't know there were so many kinds of basil. I love basil, so now I'm going to be looking for those other uh, basil kinds here next time I go to the market, so thank you. Uh, thank you again. I'm honored to be a part of this uh, third Indo-U.S. Services Summit uh, organized by the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, the IACC. Thank you again. Um, my name is David Pasquini. I'm a commercial officer. I'm based here in Mumbai. Uh, we're currently very rainy uh, under a lot of monsoon, uh, and, uh, it's, but it's good to be here. Uh, the U.S. Commercial Service is dedicated to promoting bilateral trade and investment between the United States and India. Uh, our role, the organization that I work for, is to connect Indian companies and U.S. suppliers and to assist Indian firms that are looking to grow in the United States. Here at the Consulate General of Mumbai, we are committed to promoting legitimate travel to the United States, a country that has something for everyone. So from the vast beauty of our national parks, our mountains, our deserts, our forests, we have it all, to the historic and diverse sites that tell the story of our people and our culture, the United States offers destinations for international travelers like no other. When you think of the United States, you often think of Disneyland or Manhattan or Los Angeles, uh, but as many of you know, America is hugely diverse. We have more land dedicated to national parks than anywhere in the world. Our nation's capital is brimming with big, free, wonderful museums. We've got beautiful coastlines, mountains. We've got great universities and so much more to see and do. And I hope that many more Indians come and visit the United States. A few statistics on the, the, uh, the travel relationship between the US and India. India represents one of the fastest growing outbound travel markets in the world. In 2021 alone, over 400,000 Indians visited the United States. In fact, India is ranked fifth in the world for the number of outbound tourism to the United States. Travel and tourism is a vitally important sector. Approximately one in every 20 American jobs relies directly or indirectly on travel and tourism. That is a huge part of our economy. So this is an extremely important part of the economy. And it's much more than just a driver of economic growth. The rich experiences and the cultural exchanges that visitors take home when they leave a place is just as important as the jobs and growths that their visits create. We also hope that many Americans can come and visit India and explore the beautiful sights and the rich culture of this amazing land. Uh, my family is coming to visit me next month, actually, on a, on a personal note, and I'm, I'm very happy to welcome them here to India and to show them the experience. And again, as, as Madam Radha said, um, Indians are very welcoming, and so I'm really excited to introduce them to all my new friends here in India. Um, I do want to elevate the, the conversation beyond tourism. On a, on a broader scale, President Biden has recently said, as many of you uh, have heard, that the US and India relationship is one of the most consequential in the world. It's vital to addressing virtually every global challenge that our people face, whether that's health security, climate change, food security, and a free and prosperous Indo-Pacific. Further evidence of the importance of the relationship, the United States is India's largest trading partner. We do more than $191 billion in two-way trade. Millions of Indian nationals reside in the United States, and over 200,000 Indian students come to the United States every year. So I want to stop there, but before I do, I do want to touch up on the issue of visas, because I know for the travel and tourism industry, this is an issue that is on everyone's minds. The travel and tourism industry is dependent on visas. We know this. We understand how important it is to get people traveling quickly and efficiently. I know that the current wait time is long. Uh, the pandemic created a huge backlog for visas, but our consular operations are focusing on bringing down those visa wait times. In fact, that's a top priority for the US government. And India has our full attention. 
We've expanded our consular teams and streamlined our operations to reduce wait times and process incoming applications as quickly as possible. Uh, in fact, we're on track to process well over a million applications from India in 2023. That's higher than almost any other country in the world. So I'll stop there on that note. Um, I do want to say that we, we do remain committed. Uh, the U.S. government is committed to this industry, the travel and tourism industry, and to ensuring that a whole new generation of adventurers, entrepreneurs, scholars can experience the wonders of travel and tourism. I have made a few notes here, um, from, particularly from the, uh, the remarks from Madam Secretary. On, I completely agree, exchanging views on destination management, very important. Academic collaborations and skilling. This is an area absolutely where we can work together. Developing tourism ecosystems and, and just that knowledge exchange that the Madam Secretary mentioned. I think those are all things that are, are key and that I will work with my team here on, on working on developing those connections. So I'll stop there. Again, I thank you very much for the opportunity and, um, and thank you again. Thank you so much, uh, David. But yes, we would definitely look forward to continuing after the web uh, webinar as well to discuss these various pillars and the various uh, points on which we're going to be working together and especially, especially data collection because US in the services data is excellent as we understand. And of course, uh, with this, I, I welcome from the Ministry of Tourism, our Director of Tourism, sir. Uh, would you like to please throw light about the GDP, uh, India's GDP in tourism sector, sir? Uh, as per our revised strategy, because we consider tourism as one among the three T's that can uh, in, invade our GDP engine. So it includes tourism, trade, and technology. So the, uh, the way which we can utilize tourism to make in our relationship strong and also to create employment and other aspects to our GDP, it's immense. So that is the area where we have to focus on. And from our point of view, our partnership or India and US can uh, do uh, a great wonders in this particular sector and in the way how we can invigorate the GDP of here. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now with the creation of, of course, 53 million plus jobs by 2029, what we are anticipating in tourism. Uh, Manav, could you please uh, let us know if there are some new projects and investments which are being expected between India and U.S.? currently in tourism? So I think uh, there are a lot of new hotel projects that are coming up. Uh, what is interesting is that these, in the last decade, the focus was on major cities, you know, Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, Chennai. Uh, increasingly, you're seeing a lot more new supply coming into the territory locations, uh, smaller cities, and also a lot of uh, leisure locations. So I mentioned I, I was in Kashmir, last week. Uh, obviously, that's a new growing destination. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in the Northeast. You know, this is a completely virgin territory for tourism, uh, both domestic and international. Um, and one of my clients uh, said, you know, sir, there's so much road activity going on. Just wait till the uh, Eastern Corridor opens. And he's talking about the road that is being uh, potentially talked, which will take you from Delhi to all the way to uh, Bangkok through Myanmar, you know, once those transportation links come up, uh, it is quite obvious that there will be more and more hotels that are built around uh, the, these new roads and so forth, which means that our projection is in the next seven to eight years, we will double the number of existing branded hotel supply that is already in India. And we are at around 140,000 rooms. Uh, we think that this can actually go up to 200 by the end of the decade uh, that we are currently in. So therefore, that means that many more jobs which will be required um, and a huge opportunity for employment. And of course, for people like Rajan to skill them uh, so that the hotel industry can be continue to be well serviced. Thank you. Thank you. That was very well uh, taken and uh, very well uh, answered, of course. And 
we would like definitely uh, mr bora you to please tell us the road ahead as far as logistics and tourism is concerned are there some take uh, would you like to put on some matrix wherein we need some points to be discussed with the ministry of tourism and which are the wants as on date to come at if not equal of course at a little par playing level with us and specifically in connection with us see basically you know the cargo logistics plays very important role as i explained you know if we have more and more flights coming into india from us to india direct you know a lot of cargo will start flying on those carriers rather than you know via middle east or european carriers you know today most of the cargo is being you know carried away by these uh, middle east carriers by dubai or qatar airways you know by qatar and other places now we need more and more freighters you know more and more passenger flights which can come to india and take more cargo this will really help the industry to grow and plus you know a lot of uh, american airlines you know more and more american airlines to come to india for you know we have of course interest in cargo you know but uh, it will you know help the passenger you know if the passengers grow cargo will automatically grow it's a part and parcel of the same uh, you know same aircraft can carry both the things so cargo will definitely increase and this will give boost to you know cargo as well as passengers that's what i can say thank you so much on that of course uh ma'am i would like uh, to come back to you as the uh, honorable secretary mentioned about educational tie ups are required to bring up educational tourism you running a bird academy i would uh, request you to kindly please suggest how could we march forward in collaborating with us to build our academic uh, mous and uh, other curriculums Ma'am, you have to unmute yourself. Thank you very much for asking that question. That was in my mind already to talk about it. See how to translate the demands of the U.S. to India. we have to collaborate with many universities together especially in tourism in travel hospitality if you go to any of the villages go to the smallest of the towns there is a history and i think the world is very curious to know or get deep into the history of india by doing this this will give employment to the people who are in the village say so talk about agriculture to tourism many people today are moving from the hotels to the natural uh, surroundings i would also recommend and take manav's view to create a eco tourism agricultural tourism and we should have some designed hotels according to the background that is what is required in today's world to give solace peace and nature to every individual whether it's indian or we have to work together on that thank you thank you so much on that ma'am and uh, coming back to mr david pasquini when we are talking about identifying common uh, destinations uh, would would they i think collaborations like you have universal studios in the us if those kind of things could be replicated to india a lot could grow uh, both ways and uh, of course uh, ministry of tourism uh, can take a lead to get this uh, done maybe starting from the film cities etc 
And definitely, ma'am, as you said, the collaboration of many universities is required, not only for travel and tourism and for skilling, but also in the medical tourism field. There can be a lot of exchange programs for doctors, for nurses, for technicians, both ways in between US and India. And we can this this way it can build up the medical tourism too. Of course, there are different types, nine types, the ecotourism, the adventure tourism, all can be worked on uh, together. With this, I would like also, uh, uh, Mr. Rajun, if you could please tell us if there is, you see, see any demand and supply gap as of now for the man force required, because we are anticipating by 2029, mm -hmm. 53 million jobs will be created, as Manav also mentioned and commented on it. Uh, what, what would you say about the current situation on the demand and supply gap? Yeah, I mean, there's a terrific question because, you know, as I mentioned in my earlier talk, that the biggest concern is how to uh, funnel this demand. I mean, currently, when we talk and we do our internal studies, we have done where I'm saying that while we may be skilling about a lakh and 25,000 youth every year, the demand is about 4 lakh plus. We are, as we talked just now, we are doing a very extensive district-wise study across India, uh, across every state to ensure, to funnel out what the demand is. Because post-COVID, as I mentioned, demand is also seen. So that is a big concern. But I just want to deliberate for a moment on the fact that, you know, when when we talking about collaboration with the Radisson or the Marriott or the KFCs and the McDonald's of the world, uh, our standards that we make out here are global standards and they can be used globally. However, I think to take this to the next step, we need to do some, some stuff critically along with the US government. For example, when we are talking about a skill exchange program, we spoke about it, Secretary Madam spoke about it, David spoke about it also. I think this is something that we need to move on quickly. India Academia Partnership. I, I spoke about our um, uh, MOU with the American Hotel and Lodging Education. Ms. Bhatia spoke about the fact that, you know, with university. At THSC, apart from the 600 training centers, we have tied up with 100 universities and colleges in India, which are running the tourism and hospitality skill program. Technology and innovation is another thing that we need to be looking at, where collaboration and skilling can leverage the advancement in technology and digital learning, which is becoming extremely, extremely critical in today's scenario. Couple of quick ones more on this is internship and apprenticeship program, because this then become aspirational. People get a chance to go overseas, have a look, or their program, uh, apprentices coming here. Entrepreneurship and startup is another area that we need to be looking at where Collaboration and skilling can also focus on fostering entrepreneurship and supporting startup ecosystem because there are a lot of startups happening and I think that's something that we can collaborate with the US a lot. And lastly, not the least, is the sector-specific collaboration where identifying specific sectors where India and the US can collaborate in skilling efforts in which is very crucial. For example, in tourism and hospitality, Joint initiatives can be undertaken to train professionals in the areas of hotel management that you spoke about, culinary art, tour guiding, event planning. And these are the things that we need to be talking to to take this to the next level to fill in that gap, which is growing bigger and bigger. Absolutely. That is a great uh, message which you have given. I think we have taken note of that as well. And of course, Mr. David Pasquini, I would last but not the least ask you that what kind of U.S. investments are you uh, foreseeing with India in the tourism spectre, uh, sector with respect to aviation, defense, which are the prominent sectors which you've been working for prior when you were with the DIT and uh, for UK into the U.S. Uh, market. So today when we are sitting in India, how do you foresee those kind of investments coming into India? Yeah, I think I think uh, you know we cover a, a, a wide variety of sectors here uh, at Mission India, but I think the important thing here is just uh, really 
making it easier for us to do business. I think uh, somebody highlighted uh, earlier in this the panel that you know a lot of these partnerships and a lot of this, the tourism and this tends to follow the business. So I think if we can keep working on connecting the business between the two countries, then a lot of that that we'll see will follow. Uh, one of the themes I'm seeing a lot here is skilling. I think that's an important thing that I've seen throughout this panel. So I think it's going to be really important to to work on getting institutions here to India to, to meet with their counterparts and to build on some of these programs. About a year ago, we had a, um, we ran an education trade mission here to India and it was massively successful. I mean, there was so much interest from US institutions to come here to India to meet with their counterparts and to work on some of these big issues. So I think uh, those are maybe some of the areas that we'll look to prioritize. But I think generally, as more business happens between the two countries and as it gets easier to do business, then I think a lot of these things that we're discussing will follow. The flight paths will follow, uh, you know, the tourism will follow, a lot of the things that we've mentioned on this panel. And so uh, those are things that, you know, we, we do here at the Department of Commerce. And, and I urge you all to reach out and get in touch with us. If you have an idea for us as well, uh, you know, we would love to hear it on how we can uh, develop some programming to grow those areas. So data is one of the areas now that I've taken down that I've also looked at with my team. But uh, again, open to ideas and basically uh, looking at those areas uh, for, for future programming. Thank you so much. The time running out and we have hardly two minutes left with us. So I would like to wind off with the major takeaways for the session, panel session. That is, we've talked about data management, destination creation, academic collaborations, tourism destination creations, then infrastructure developments, connectivity, which is a major issue, then branded hotels, as Manav said, and airlines, more and more of airlines coming in for cargo, and technological and digital advancements is what we're going to be thinking about working upon as a matrix. So with this, I definitely thank my esteemed panelists to have taken out time and be here with us at the Indo-American Chamber's third Indo-US Services Summit. With this, it's a very big thank you to all of you, please. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.